Another new all-time high for the SPY with last Friday's SPY going as high as 489.12, 489-ish. Very close to my 1.618 FIB level at 490.49, getting very close. However, as you guys can see by these candles, it's just chop, low volatility. I was watching this inside candle setup, no follow-through, still close within the range of the mother candle. Nothing. Now, something I'd like to talk about on this channel a lot is the chop phase and the trend phase. We get chop phases, trend phase. Chop phase is a trend phase. The market, you know, in the chop phase, it builds strength so it can make that next move up. And they also do it by trapping a lot of retail traders during this time who may be bull bias, bear bias, and especially those who are over trading. So it's very important when it, when we're in the chop phase, not you don't want to over trade. Um, but what are we chopping for? We got a bunch of catalysts this week. On checking here on Market Watch, consumer confidence, job opening. But the one that sticks out to me is the federal interest rate decision this Wednesday, 2 p.m. January 31st. We are going to end the month. With a bang. And let me tell y'all, if y'all been paying attention to the previous FOMC days, we get volatility, man. Volatilities. And, and another thing I'll say, bottoms and tops usually get put in on FOMC days. And it's, it's a beautiful thing. And I hope you guys make a shit ton of money. But don't be too surprised if we continue to chop up until FOMC, okay? We just got to know the conditions. If it's not favorable to us, then, you know, we can sit out, stay in cash position, or just trade something else. But um, I'm definitely watching FOMC this Wednesday. It's going to be crazy. And, you know, Uncle Powell, he comes to speak with us at 2 p.m. No, 2.30 p.m. Data gets released at 2 p.m. Then he comes speak at 2.30 p.m. It's usually what happens. And... As far as the price action go, because this is a price action channel, is there's usually uh, a reversal. Like the initial reaction is a certain way. It could be up, it could be down, and then the real move comes when or after Powell speaks. So my advice for you guys, like my advice for you guys just about every day is to trade with the traps. Okay, play it level to level, no greed, leave runners if you're chasing home runs. Let your runners get the home runs, chase the home runs. That's why they call runners. And, you know, don't be don't be uh, greedy. And, of course, if you get a trap set up, play that trap set up. Trade with the trap. And, like I said, the 2, 2 p.m., data gets released, 2.30 to 3 o'clock. That's when a reversal tends to happen. So the false breakout and the false breakdown setup will be the best trade setup for you. It's the best trade setup for you every day, but especially, especially on FOMC day because it's very trappy. All right, let me give you guys an example of a of a good false breakout setup. You see, I had this 488.7 level here based on this blue trend line. We, got a, we cleared it intraday. You see, we cleared it intraday on the 1045 candle. And then the 11 o'clock candle, we closed back below it that's your entry when we close back below it that's your entry as it breaks down or after it breaks down whatever you're comfortable with you want to get the best entry as you can of course but that's your entry for puts false breakout setup and what else is important about this price action behavior is you notice what the price action behavior did after it broke that back below 488.7 after we got the false breakout set up, we treated that zone as a sell zone, okay? Treated that zone as a sell zone. So two entries that I like to do is false breakouts and false breakdown. And of course, the back test. The back test usually confirms if the breakout or the breakdown is legit. But this is an example of a successful false breakout setup. And it's beautiful. Trade, you know, we get a false breakout setup. Trade gets invalidated when we get the, the close back above 15, 30 minute, one hour time frame, whatever you're comfortable with. 
the lower the time frame, it, it usually get more trappy, more fake out. So just keep that in mind. You got to do your best to find the best balance for you. All right. So, yeah, trade with the traps this week because it's going to get real trappy. Here's triple Q. Huh. These candles, I'll admit, it does look a little bit toppy because we just continue to fail to clear that 1.786 Fib level. Okay, and when I say toppy, I don't mean this is the top is in and we're going to drop down to 300. Okay, that's not what I'm saying. We could get a pullback. All right, and to trigger that deeper pullback that bears would probably love, would be, we would need a breakdown of support as usual. 423.7. Uh, a loss of that would be pretty bearish because we did technically cleared it with this gap up. We filled the gap now, but we technically did clear it with this gap up. And Friday, we technically back tested as a support. So below 423.7 would make, you know, that would be a false breakout and it will make the back test as support and validate it, put in the lower targets in play at 421.7, 419.6, and 417. Okay. Now that we got the back test though and the gap is filled, I would trust the bounce more or the defense of this support level if 425 and 426.7 once again clears. And that 426.7 level, we've never cleared it. We've got above it, but we never officially cleared it on the daily chart. So that's something to watch out for if you are a bull because if we do, 429, 430.5 and new all-time highs would be in play. NVDA, it's a 15 minute chart. Let me go on a higher time frame. Look like it's just consolidating, guys. I mean, you could still get decent level to level moves, a little more than level to level moves with NVDA. But overall, it's in the chop phase. You can see the mother candle range, mother candles range, we're still within it. Uh, 628.5 down to 599.3. That's the chop range. It's a big old chop range, so you can still trade it. Day trade it level to level style. If you swing trade it, um, I would recommend doing it with runners. You know, manage those risks because this stock is really really risky, and any news could come overnight and just screw you over. But yeah, levels are still the same. Uh, we are getting some pullback as of right now, but if we can clear six ten point five, six fourteen and six seventeen ish, we could get a bounce back to the upside okay overall bearish for the short term below 610.5 608.5 and 605.6 all right below 605.6 we should get a deeper pullback to the downside maybe back below 600 okay tesla it's been looking bearish guys and it's still looking bearish got a mother candle high uh range of 180 to 193 so 13 dollar range pretty big but as long as within that range, it is considered chop. As of right now, the big FIB level that we lost was 184.5. As long as below it, I am bearish on Tesla with 182, 180 in play with 176.8 below that. That's the next FIB level. And obviously below that would be very bearish. I may favor some type of bounce and the RSI getting reset if 184.5 can recapture putting higher targets in play um you know we clear 184.5 i would try along worth a shot stop loss would be below 184.5 if it's cleared targeting 186 188 190 192 plus and 194 above 194 we may have a bottom in at least for the short term okay because remember it is a downtrend since july but even you know they get those pivot lows lower lows we get some relief bounces, as you guys can see. So don't be ignorant to that, guys. Come on. So above 184.5, we could get a relief bounce. Below 184.5, we could head down lower. And the point of me telling you this is to react. You're looking to react. Know the signs. Like you're traveling down Interstate 95. And you're watching for the signs. And you're just reacting. All right. IWM. Still chopping. Chop range is 194 to 198.5, okay? Anything in between is just noise, all right? 190, let me see. Yeah, 197 is the middle level of the chop range. Above 190, above 198.5, I would be bull bias in favor, more upside. 
and below 194 would be a breakdown of this pink trend line breakdown of the mother candles low and would be in my opinion bearish let's see what's next is apple. let's do apple yeah apple's pulling back look like they want to back test that 50 we recaptured the 50 it's pretty healthy to see it back test the 50 but for bull's sakes for the bull's sakes they're gonna have to hold it okay so the 50 is around 190.8 it'll probably creep up a little more to the 191.2 which is my fib level so yeah bulls need to defend that and recapture 193 if we recapture 193 i'll trust the bounce if we break down that 50 and my fib level that's bearish guys false breakout setup lower high we could head down lower and apple's a, a pretty heavy weighted stock so it could help with the um spy be uh pushing down too okay so just look to react um yeah okay let me see amd looking similar to um nvda you know ai guys ai uh yeah if it wants more upside gotta clear 180.5 to go back to the upside and set some new all-time highs otherwise support I got my support at 175.5, 174, and 172.5. I'll definitely be bearish in favor of deeper pullback below 172.5. Uh, gap fill at 168-ish. And then next fib level is at 164. All right. Amazon. Yeah, we got that break. You guys see here from that 158.3-ish level. That's my fib level. Had some selling pressure from there based on the wicks. Not once, but twice. And then we finally got a close above it. So if you're a bear, you're going to need a false breakout, which means 158.3 needs to fail as support. If it does, we do have a gap at uh, 157.7. But I would favor a deeper pullback down to 155.6. But we'll need to lose that 158.3 support level. Otherwise, next resistance is at 160. As long as above. If it clears, higher targets could be in play. 161.4, 162.7, and 160, or close to 165. These are Fibonacci extension levels. Uh, here is Meta. It looked like it's chopping a little bit. Yeah, I mean, is that all, new all-time highs, guys? They didn't quite clear that three, what was that, 396 level. It did get as high intraday to 396.7. All right, so we see that that's the zone. I, I still like to see it clear 396 and give us a close above. Just give us some new highs and lows to work with. Otherwise, support support still relatively the same below 396. Uh, I got support at 393, 390, uh, 388, 385.6. Fib level at 384. Yeah, below 384, I'd definitely be bearish. That would I'll favor a test of 378. And below that, definitely a deeper pullback. Got to be careful here. Volatility is getting weaker. Just look to react. Look to react. Netflix. Still looking bullish, this stock, after that gap up. Smashed the uh, 1.618 Fib level. Didn't quite clear it, though. 571.7 must clear for more upside just follow the price action all right and we go up higher test uh 579.6 maybe even higher than that this stock moves i would be bearish uh if uh 563.5 fail as support it's a, i know it's pretty wide but then look at the stock it moves what do you want me to do um yeah below 563.5 i would favor a drop down to possibly 558.5 or 555 ish below 555 would be false breakout mode for netflix and it would be very very bearish i would favor a pullback all right google inside daily candle as well 154.7 to 151.2 is the chop range anything in between is noise so we need to see a break above 154.7 to be bullish and i'll favor more upside up to 156 Maybe uh, 157.5 and 159. Supports at 152.8. And of course, the mother candle's low at 154.2. Those levels fail. Bearish, 150 and 147 in play. Okay.
Microsoft didn't forget it this time. It's just been uh, it's getting weak. Uh, let's see. I got critical support. Still at four hundred two point two. That's the Fibonacci extension level. It's been trying to give us some buying pressure there, but not much follow through to the upside. So that's kind of weak. So if it breaks down, fall 2.2, all the buy orders get absorbed there and it breaks down. We could head down lower, look to short, gap fill at 398.8. 395.5 would be a fib extension target. And yeah, we had a bunch of buy pressure from that 393.7 zone. Those could be targets if we lose fall 2.2. Otherwise, we could be chopping and building strength for more upside, which next resistance is at fall 6. And if that clears, we could head up higher up to 411.8. That's the next Fib extension level that I have. Coin, testing that Fibonacci level at 128.5. And once again, getting a little selling pressure there, okay? But it's trying. Look like bulls are trying. So if they can succeed and clear 128.5, that would be the trigger to go long, putting more upside targets in play. Otherwise, as long as below 128.5, bear is still... And the RSI is not oversold, so this could be the bear's chance to push it down lower. Look to react. Here's dog pool order for Friday. Most of the order came in at 487.8. 43% came at 487.84. Excuse me. 487.84. And 41% of activity came at 487.5. 50, 487.51. 16% came at 487.52. So it's all like around the same damn zone. All right. 3.4 billion, 3.2 billion. It's a good amount. All right. Add that level, add those levels to your chart. Add that zone to your chart. All right. I'm going to try not to go too fast. What? I just got here. I just got here. Y'all see what I got to deal with? Y'all see this? I don't know, guys. Y'all let me know what's better than Cheddar Flow, man. I've been using Cheddar Flow for years, and I get shit like this happening to me. So y'all let me know. You got, you got, you like Cheddar Flow? You guys know a better service that I can invest in. Anyways, have a, have a great rest of your weekend. Good luck this week. Talk to y'all tomorrow. Peace.